Hangout on air is live. So that means it should be live. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Omni Bros Live. I'm your host, Omni Dog, here at 8.15 at night. This is the earliest we've been late, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm here with uh, my fabulous co-hosts. First of all, the Omnibus Collector, Riley Moore. Hello. And we also have a week in geekdoms, Giovanni Menendez. Sup, everybody. Happy to be here. We're happy to see you. I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, there was a storm that came through. Like at the last second, the damn thing went like whoop, and it went up north. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Nice. That's awesome. Um. Let's see. Tonight we are we don't have um, Riley for that long. We have you for what, like another forty five minutes? Um, roughly. So, um, do you want to talk about what we? Why don't we blast through then what we got this week? Yep. Um, and that'll give. I think Gabe's going to jump in when he gets a chance. Okay, yeah, um, I'll, uh, I can run through mine my stack really quickly. Yeah, why don't we start? Um, we'll get to our topic in a bit. Why don't we start with what you got this week, Riley? Because I know this was a big week for a lot of people, including me. Yes, it was. Oh, my wife just came home, so uh, uh -oh. hurry this up and uh -oh. oh, just give me one second. I'm gonna let her know. What yeah, I'm go smooth things over. <laughs> Damage control. Yeah, right. Uh, I can do mine. In the okay, meantime. good. Go for it. Uh, I only got this small stack of books, basically a bunch of rebirth stuff. Aquaman yeah, but you volume. got quality this week, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I can't wait to read them all. Uh, Aquaman Volume 3, the greatest DC superhero the world has ever known. <laughs> <laughs> I got Wonder Woman Rebirth Volume, uh, what is this, Volume 3? I got Teen Titans Volume 1, Titans Volume 1, and uh, this thing that everybody's been raving about, Kaiju right. Max. I right. love Japanese monsters. I love Kaiju, so I think I will like this. That is supposed to be awesome. I can't wait to get it, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I will, I will try and do a video on it pretty soon. Uh, oh, and uh, I also got, because of you, sir, I got uh, the Harley Quinn Omnibus, but it hasn't arrived yet. Yay! And I'm very much looking forward to it. It looks awesome. And I did get a couple Valiant books for cheap because they had that sale on IST for like 50% off or something like that. So oh, I yeah. Got a few books. <sighs> Okie dokie, guys. Y'all ready? Awesome. Yeah, Gio just went over what he got, and I praised it highly. It was all quality. Oh, well, okay. Well, sorry. Cool. No, it's cool. Everything's cool. Okay, so let's see. I grabbed a bunch of cool stuff uh, real quickly. Um, two new volumes of manga. The first one I got was Boruto Volume 2. That, uh, still following the, if you watched the Boruto movie, it's still following that plot line. Um, good stuff. Reminds me of the original Naruto. It's a lot of fun. Uh, one Punch Man Volume 12. Still fun and funny series. Um, this one was kind of right in the middle of a story, but it seems like the next two volumes, uh, unfortunately, they are delayed quite a bit because we're catching up to Japan's releases, but the next two volumes seem to be wrapping up the next major story arc. Um, All-Star Batman Volume 2, nice. The uh, Ends of the Earth. This has issues nine or six through nine of All-Star Batman and includes the backup features drawn by Francesco Francavia. Uh, each issue in this one has a different artist. Uh, so one issue by Jock, one issue by Frank Avia, one issue by Tula Lote, and one issue by uh, Giuseppe Camincoli, uh for a pretty interesting little four-part arc uh, in that series. I really enjoyed. That's a, those are awesome artists. Yeah, it's a, it was a good little team on there. I got the new deluxe edition for Batman Year One. Uh, it features the new coloring that was first seen, I guess, in the uh, Absolute Edition from earlier this year, I think. Um, this coloring is different from the previous Deluxe Edition, which the previous one, uh, I think was almost 10 years ago now, 
was kind of uh, lambasted by the artist, uh, David right. uh, Mazzuccelli. So DC kind of sought for him to approve of their new coloring. And I have to say, it's pretty awesome. And a lot of the artwork kind of looks like uh, it could have been done by Francesco Francavia at this point. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased. It is a little bit expensive uh, for the oversized hardcover. It's $35 for a you know four issue book. But I don't. I've never had this in oversized hardcover, and I really love Batman Year One. So to me, it was worth it to pay for the discounted price online. And that coloring is phenomenal. Um, and then the three, I got three out of the six big omnis that came out. Uh, I got Star Wars Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. I upgraded from the two volumes of oversized hardcover. I know a lot of people were like. It's pointless because the same stuff, same size, all that. But uh, I sold them to a friend at work who was going to give it to her brother. So it went to a good cause, and I got about enough money to pay for this uh, upgraded version anyway. Well, you're not the OHC collector. You're the omnibus collector. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then uh, I grabbed the Hulk, Planet Hulk, which uh, also came under some fire because it's a $100 cover price for, like, 600 pages uh, and the only thing different about the this compared to the oversized hardcover is that it collects um, the prelude to Planet Hulk story from Incredible Hulk and then the story from Fantastic Four that kind of leads into that and a lot of people were like well I don't really care about that might as well just get the oversized hardcover uh, I really like Planet Hulk quite a bit and I never owned the oversized hardcover which went out of print and was quite expensive. So paying $48 for this when people were paying as much or more for the Planet Hulk oversized hardcover seemed like a pretty decent deal to me, um, especially since I really loved that book. And I'm excited to pair it on my shelves with World War Hulk, which is going to be twice the size of that one. Yeah, that's going to be a great book to have. Oh, yeah. All those tie-ins and stuff are going to be awesome. Um, and then, finally, I knocked off a huge whale, which is no longer a whale anymore, and that <laughs> is The Punisher by Garth Ennis Omnibus. Um, it feels good to have this on the shelf. It feels weird for it to be so readily available to have bought it brand <laughs> spanking new for 48 bucks. That feels weird, um, considering how long I was looking for this book. But uh, yeah. I haven't started reading it yet. I, I plan on starting this soon and then doing an entire just Punisher marathon through all of the Ennis material, all the Punisher Max and all that good stuff. So I am pretty excited about that one. I did pass on Star Wars Marvel UK because most of that book is collected in the third Star Wars omnibus anyway. Hmm. I also passed on Punisher Back to War because, well, I, I'm, I wanted it, but I couldn't dignify spending the money on something that's kind of a anthology type piece together volume that's mm -hmm. just a bunch of material from other books. I'd rather have Punisher Volume One with like his first ongoing series, like a chunk of that in there. But maybe one day I'll get it. And then another one I didn't get is Harley Quinn. But I'm just talk about that one. Oh, I'm faint. <laughs> I'm feeling faint that you didn't get it. Okay, that's it for what you got. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got Black Beetle, Ooh. Uh, Kara Bos Bosek. This is a Frank Avila book. Uh, I got that. And I got, on the recommendation of Matthew Sibley, The Unstoppable Wasp, which is supposed to be great. It's one of those canceled series that was awesome that Marvel decided to chop. <coughs> Manifest Destiny 5. Ooh, I need to get that. Yeah. I also got Season 1 and Season 2 of Kaiju Max. Oh, okay. I yeah. I totally forgot there was a Season 2. <laughs> yeah, there, I, I think they're uh, publishing Season 3 right now. Okay. Um, and then because I read about it in Tom King's Batman... I read little bits and pieces of it. It's not supposed to be that great, but I really wanted it anyway because I love Batman. I got Night of the Monster Men. Nice. 
And now this is great. This gets universal love. Harley Quinn by uh, Kessel and Terry Dodson, the deluxe edition. This is going to be great. I love this book. And then I picked up some new 52 stuff that I needed. Batman 9 and 10 from New 52, because I realized that I never finished Snyder's run. Uh, so I needed that. I also got All-Star Batman by Snyder. Hmm. And the Wicked and Divine collection, volume two. Wicked and Divine. I also got Darth Vader. I gave, mine went to a good cause. I gave my OHCs to uh, my daughter. Now, is this appearing backwards? No. Or forwards? Uh, looking right to me. It is looking right yeah. to you. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, then I got, I did, I did get the Punisher back to war. Uh, I understand what you were saying about it, but I still wanted all those early appearances. It sounded fun. Um, even though I have a lot of the earlier appearances, I still like, I wanted them all together to read. And then this is also the only book that I'm reading this week. My girl, Harley Quinn. <coughs> Here she is. All fabulousness of her. And I would be happy to try and talk you into getting it, Riley. It is yeah. certainly wonderful. And there's Gabe Infinity Watch. What, what? Hey. What's going on, guys? I made it. Sorry. That's fine. Cool. You're just in time to hurry up and tell us what you got. <laughs> oh, my turn on what I got, huh? Yeah, your perfect timing. Perfect. That's exactly what I came here for today is to talk about what I bought. <laughs> All right. So let's see. I don't know what you guys picked. It might be or what you guys picked up, but it might be pretty similar. So I'll start out with uh hulk uh planet hulk on the bus right nice, nice. uh you guys talked about this on the last show with you and riley so i decided to pick up the uh tom king batman deluxe e excellent Rebirth. yeah it's a beautiful book great book i can't wait to rip it open and read it this is uh, Tom King's great. I mean, his stuff is amazing, and I really want to see what he's doing with Batman. Uh, one of my favorite, like, uh, design, <laughs> like covers, everything to do with this Harley Quinn book. Yay! Like, look at the cover. It's beautiful. There you go. And look at the back cover, too. Like, it's a really nice wraparound cover. with some really cool artwork on it. Gabe knows what's up. I do know what's up, and I haven't opened it yet, but I know the actual book cover is like the super bright pink, like fuchsia, like really great. It's just a beautiful design book. I love it. I think it's my favorite book yeah. I have design-wise. Yeah, that's cool looking. And I put this on Twitter showing that I, I bought this, and uh, Jimmy Palmiotti actually retweeted it, so that's kind of sweet. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Uh, here we go. Some Bronze Age goodness right here with New Teen Titans on the bus, Volume One. This is, of course, this is classic. This is almost a uh, required read, I think, when it comes down to comics. I was browbeaten into getting that by oh, yeah? a certain Giovanni Menendez. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love this. This is so cool. I love George Perez. I met the man a few times. Uh, Marv Wolfman's a great writer. We've been losing a lot of our legendary writers. I think yeah. Marv one of the last ones, not the last ones, but you know, he's one that's still around and hopefully he sticks around for a long time. But this is a very synonymous uh, work between those two gentlemen. It's so good, in fact, that I bought two. <laughs> that's right, you plonked. <laughs> so good. I, I bought one on Amazon, forgot about it. And then my, I ordered a, an in-stock trade version as well. So I got to go uh, beat up some crackheads near my nearest Amazon drop-off box and return one of these. <laughs> it is the most craziest of weird people to hang out in front of those drop boxes. I don't even know what those are. 
No, there's like these giant lockers that Amazon has propped up all over Vegas. And instead of mailing it, you could just put it in the box. Like this is like a, you get a special code that unlocks the locker. You stick in your return package and, you know, you return it that way. That sounds like an adventure. Yeah, and it's always in front of like 7-Elevens and Circle Ks and, and stuff like that. So it's always, no. it's, it's a, I get to return a book and uh, get hit up for a crack. <laughs> well, that was on your errands list anyway, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that's, those are my pickups for the last week. Nice. Perfect timing. Seamlessly. We moved into that seamlessly. That's how we do it around here. It's professional almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> so um, we're talking about guilty pleasures, and the only reason I'm not uh, just BSing around is because Riley actually has to hightail it out of here. Aww. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my guilty pleasures real quick, and then I'm going to get out because I have to pack for a little uh, family weekend that we're doing. Cool. And that sounds cool. Are you going to Houston? We are going to Houston to stop there and then heading to Galveston. Um, mm. With It'll be Megan and myself, my sister and her uh, fiancé, I think my mom and dad, as well as uh, one of my best and oldest friends and his girlfriend and then uh, his little sister, who's another good friend of mine, and her husband. So a whole squad of people. Are y'all going to be in one house? Yeah, we're going to my parents' beach house. I'm going to bring the uh, the the Raspberry Pi and maybe some board games and movies, and we're just going to hang out for the weekend. Raspberry Pi is that emulator thing? Yes. Also, if I can find some actual Raspberry Pi, I'm, I'm totally... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about Raspberry Pi now. Yeah, I thought... I was like, he's baking now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know me you find some rhubarb pie. Yeah, yeah. rhubarb pie's good. <laughs> Strawberry <laughs> rhubarb pie. <laughs> Let me grab some of my guilty pleasures. Okay. Um, these, these are all going to have a common theme that Jess knows, and... Uh, I think that other people are going to know what I'm doing as well. My Guilty Pleasure books are all by Daniel Way. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, the reason this is a guilty pleasure for me is because I have, as most people do, talked a lot of shit about Daniel Way as a writer. And... The thing is that I do like some of the stuff that he's done. In particular, I really enjoy his Wolverine. Not because I necessarily think that it's a great book, but I have nostalgia for it uh, as it was one of the... When I got into reading single issues, it was one of the first issue, or stories that I followed in singles. And I really enjoyed it. And... Uh, whenever they started doing these complete collections, which included not just Daniel Way's Wolverine Origin series, but also some of his other material uh, from the previous Wolverine series, I was like, well, I guess I've got to buy those. And I did. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't say, like, the thing is, I even have memories of when I was first reading this series, um, going into the comic shop and telling, like, the, the guys that worked there, I was like, I like the story here, but this artwork is just not doing it for me because it's Steve Dillon who, you know, rest in peace, and I love his artwork quite a bit, but it just does not work for superhero books. And his Wolverine just looks awkward, like the way that he draws people in spandex. And I was like, you know, I really dig the story, and I, I like the characters and stuff, but, man, that artwork. And so the guy at the shop wound up being like, well, maybe not good there, but you should probably check out Preacher, and so that was when I first saw Preacher, and when I therefore started to love Steve Dillon as an artist. But um, of course, this is not my only exposure to Daniel Way. I've also got the material that he co-wrote for a character that he introduced, Dokken. Um, he co-wrote a lot of this with other writers, like I believe Marjorie Liu did some material on Dokken. And uh, I always was a, a fan of the character of Dokken since he was introduced uh, kind of as that, like, younger, uh, 
darker version of Wolverine. And I was always intrigued by the idea of like the Dark Avengers, and I thought it was cool whenever uh, Dawkins became the Dark Wolverine. I also have Daniel Way's run on Thunderbolts, which, as I understand it, have kind of become whaleettes. Yeah, they are. The and I don't necessarily like the story until the second volume, which has some amazing artwork from uh, Phil Noto. Oh, yeah. And caps off with an issue written by uh, Charles Soule, which focuses on the Punisher, so that doesn't really apply here since it's not by uh, Daniel Way. But that issue by Charles Soule that focuses on the Punisher is one of my favorite single issues uh, probably in the past several years or maybe of all time. It's just a great single issue story that also features Steve Dillon artwork and Steve Dillon on Punisher is always A+. plus. There's the uh, cover to that issue. Hmm. But... Uh, <laughs> Let me ask you to just hang on one second. The the camera's not switching to the speaker. It's just on you the whole time. Do you know how I can get it so that it s switches to who's talking? Um, Is that up to me to do? Yeah, because you're the host. Oh, so I switch the camera? So you... Um, so now they're looking at me? Try clicking... Try clicking on the uh, the main image on the Hangout and see if that changes anything. The main image on the Hangout. Like, I mean, like, you're, uh, like, the biggest image, the one that's, that's the biggest thing that you see. That's me. Okay. Then try clicking on that or double-clicking on that and see if that changes and takes the box off of me. It's on me now. <laughs> now try, try clicking on yourself again and see what happens. Or double clicking on yourself again. Oh, it went to you, and then it went to me. Okay, I think you fixed it. Awesome. Thanks. How did I do that? Um, I just double clicked on me? Yeah. You just double click on basically whoever is the highlighted person. Okay, cool. Sorry to interrupt your train of thought. That's okay. Um, let's see. Other stuff by Dan Way that I have read. Uh, I had a copy of his Venom, which was actually signed by him, personalized. He sent me a copy of it um, to review. And I wound up reviewing it, and I was like, this is just... a." Uh, horrible ripoff of Alien, and it's fun, or not Alien, of uh, The Thing. I was like, and it's fun, but if you know that it's just The Thing, why wouldn't you just watch The Thing? So, I don't know if he was very happy with that. Um, <laughs> and then his Deadpool, I've spoken about a lot of times, and that's going to be my guiltiest, maybe not guiltiest pleasure, but my guiltiest purchase is when they do the two-volume Deadpool omnibus. I'm almost forced to buy them because I have every other Deadpool omnibus, and I'm like, I, it, it's, it completes the collection, and I feel really shitty about it, and that's the guiltiest <laughs> thing. That's the guiltiest pleasure I have, is that I will have a complete omnibus collection of Deadpool, and his complete omnibus collection is literally going to be like a complete collection of every Deadpool series. So... That's my guiltiest pleasure. It hasn't happened yet, but I, once it happens, that will be the guiltiest pleasure of all, and I already feel bad about it because I know I'm going to do it. <laughs> Are you going to read it when you get it? The only material in that stuff that I have not read is, um, well, the I haven't read the Hit Monkey miniseries, but I haven't read the last like dozen issues or so of that series, so when the second volume comes out, I will read those issues just because I've never read those issues before. But I don't know that I'll ever reread. I'm just going to have it there because it's literally the complete set. And I've mentioned before that I did enjoy like the first 20 or so issues that he was on Deadpool. But after that part, it just got too much of the same thing. 
every single month it was just Deadpool going up against another character in the Marvel Universe, becoming a punching bag, stupid jokes, like no real sense of plot, no real sense of character development, and then another arc starts in the next, you know, couple months later. And it was just the same thing over and over and over again, and it got really annoying and tiresome, especially after reading older Deadpool stuff like Joe Kelly, and I'm like, come on, like, he's a character that's able to have some depth to him, and you're just completely ignoring all of that fact. And it was fun at first, and I enjoyed your jokes with Pancakes and Deadpool versus Bullseye, but now I'm just getting really tired of it, and I kind of got upset that... Dan Wei had the longest run on Deadpool. Like, I I was unnecessarily upset about that. Why do you have the longest run? It's, like, not the best run at all. But, yeah, Daniel Wei is my guilty pleasure, and I also hate myself about it. <laughs> Nothing like a good self-loathing bout. Oh, my entire fucking life is just self-loathing. <laughs> Uh, well, that was awesome. I don't have. Have you guys read? I I don't know if I'm the only one here that is actually a Deadpool fan. But like, have y'all read those uh, those runs? The the Dan Way stuff. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I'm a huge fan of the character. I read about the first uh, twenty five issues of that series. I had it in Stingles. I was buying it then. Um. It's cool. It's fun. Um, but like you said, they get kind of out of control and jokey. And there was like that one episode or issue where Deadpool wanted to wear a meat suit because he remembered when he was a kid, he wanted to wear a meat suit. Um, they yeah. crossed over with the, with the Thunderbolts. There's a Thunderbolts crossover that was pretty cool uh, during that dark rain time frame. That was probably like my favorite stuff of that, of that series. Yep. But I'll pick up the Omnibus when it comes out. It's Deadpool. <laughs> because that's like that's what I was saying I liked was that first year and it was you know pretty clever jokes and he wasn't just you know doing random shit with random characters for no fucking reason um yeah once he got out of control once he was trying to join the X-Men and he made like his own suits and just and it know, was always where, uh, they had like so many Deadpool books going at the same time there was you know Merc with the Mouth where they turned Deadpool into Johnny Bravo, practically, where he was just chasing chicks around and stuff like that, dressing up like a pirate and crazy things like that. But also, like, the beginning of that series actually tied into, like, what was going on in the Marvel Universe. Like, the first arc was Secret Invasion, and it dealt with, like, Deadpool doing stuff with the scrolls, and it tied into Norman Osborn's story in Secret Invasion. And then, like you said, the next part was Dark Reign, and it tied into what was going on there, and Deadpool with the Thunderbolts, and Deadpool going against uh, Bullseye, a.k.a. AKA Dark Reign Hawkeye. And then, like, from there, it started to gradually go downhill. And I think a big part of it was that he wasn't paying attention to what was going on in the rest of the Marvel Universe. And when it's just like, okay, well, Deadpool this month is going to get punched in the face by the Hulk, but next month he might get smacked in the face by Thor's hammer. I don't know. And there wasn't really in any sense to like what they were trying to do with him. And like I said, it was annoying considering if you look back at previous runs where there's actually depth to the character and there's actually a storyline and there's actually, um, you know, gravity behind what happens to him. And there's actually emotion behind what he goes through, uh, which admittedly can be kind of surprising, but it's true. And, uh, but the fact that Marvel has given us literally every Deadpool comic in omnibus format is kind of hard for me as a completionist, as I am to pass on. And I feel horrible about it. Yeah. I don't blame you. I'm happy as long as I have the Joe Kelly omnibus, cause that's my favorite run of all time. For Deadpool. That's where Joe Kelly was still writing Deadpool as like a cancer survivor and was more in depth and built a lot of what we know today it was actually, you know, took place during that Joe Kelly omnibus. He's self loathing, you know, he it's dark comedy because he hates himself and he's 
kind of. Well, yeah. I mean, like he was torturing. Game. He used to torture Blind Al whenever she got out of out of out of line. Uh, he was super obsessed with yeah. Siren. Uh, he had an image inducer because he, you know, his face looked like chewed up, you know, bubble gum. There was a lot of depth, and that's where like the breaking the fourth wall started, and how uh, he was supposed to be the savior of the world, and he couldn't really deal with that kind of um, being a hero, and he was, you know, wanted to stay the anti-hero. That was a great series, man. The more I talk about, it, the more I just want to read it again. Well, I think uh, that's my time. <laughs> that's it. All right. Yeah, I, I just wanted to talk about my uh, my guilt over how much I enjoy a lot of Dan Way's stuff. Yeah. Well, I think it's probably good for you to to come clean with the, the, all that stuff. Get that off my chest. It's <laughs> yeah. Gonna let me live my life a lot better. You're a better person for it. Daniel anonymous support group. Yeah, the vacation's going to be a lot better now. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. I got to... I got to go because we got a pack and the dogs, there's two of them and there needs to be two people watching them. Whatever happened to that rug that the dog pooped on last week? Oh, I, I got it clean. Oh, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I wound up uh, cleaning and kind of conditioning it and getting everything out and soaking up any odor with uh, baking soda and, and, and it, it worked. It's clean now. Good, because that rug really tied the room together. <laughs> Not go poop on his bed. <laughs> oh, that's probably fair. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks All for right. having me for a bit. Later. Later. Peace out, homie. Yeah. Okay. And then there was Joe or Gabe. Who now the three? And now I'm totally outnumbered. Yeah. I'm way outnumbered. I can go. I can go. Uh, now. Okay. What are your uh, guilty pleasures? I have one book with me. The other one I don't have. And everybody's going to be surprised at my picks. I went with uh, this thing right here. Uh, Ultimate yes. Volume 3. <laughs> it's, yes. It's uh, hated on and people just don't seem to like it. But I got to be honest with everybody. I think the hell out of this story simply because it one it has amazing artwork by Joe Maduera. Two, I was not a huge comic book reader when it came out, and this was sort of like my first experience with uh, uh, Marvel comics, with the whole Ultimate Universe and all that stuff. When I first started collecting, I should say, and reading that, it was almost like reading an R-rated experience of something you knew, like you had your Marvel comics and this felt dirty, raunchier and uh, you know, it's like watching an R-rated movie for the first time. You dig the hell out of it simply because you're not supposed to watch it and all that stuff. So that's sort of the feeling I got when I was reading it because uh, there's like implied incest. There's uh, what? Brief nude, there's brief oh, nudity. You know <laughs> no. To, what, let's, uh, who wrote this? Uh, it was uh, uh, Jeff Loeb and uh, Joe Mariara. And it's Ultimates 3? Yeah, it's the culmination of the Ultimates in the Ultimate Universe before they got rebranded uh, as Ultimate Comics and then when it got canceled and now uh, we don't have them anymore. Uh, so Mark, what, what were the predecessors to Ultimates 3 then? Uh, Ultimates 1 and 2 were written by Mark Millar, which are okay. highly regarded. Right. Uh, they're really great stories. And I know the third one isn't as great. I know. Don't get all Haiti on the comments. No, no, Gio, Gio, Gio. It's it's amazing. It's the best one. <laughs> I, and I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. This third one, you know, there's like a, a sex tape involved. There's brief nudity. There's uh, two characters that uh, want to get into each other's pants. Uh, you got Magneto all grumpy. Uh, Doctor Doom shows up. The book has everything. Plus the art. Being in the bushes, watching people try to have sex. <laughs> Voyeuristic Wolverine. Uh, wow. Incest Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. It's just really good stuff. You got a love struck Ultron. Uh, what else is this? Um, it leads up into an ultimatum. Yeah, and by the way, ultimatum, one of the greatest ideas for an event ever. 
because yes. you're basically saying, you know what, screw you, Marvel, let's kill everybody and let's not worry about the consequences because in the Ultimate Universe, if, you're, if you die, you're dead. You don't get to come back. So that was actually pretty cool. And yeah, Ultimates 3 basically was like the tie-in or the prelude to Ultimatum, which, yeah, was a little bit gratuitous, but eh, whatever, it's comic books. I'll let it slide. <laughs> And uh, my other book, I don't have it, but I did read it in singles, and I am a little ashamed of it, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, whatever. And that's uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Uh, <laughs> Red Hood and the Outlaws is a horrible experience. However, I love Kenneth Rockefeller's art, plus the fact that uh, he's Puerto Rican. I was super proud of that, and he draws a badass Red Hood. I love Red Hood, and I love Starfire. Sue me. I think uh, they drew an awesome looking Starfire, regardless of the fan service and the gratuitous uh, eye candy and all that stuff. I find I found it enjoyable. Sure, it was trashy storytelling, uh, but I liked it. Wow, that's a reviled comic. <laughs> I know. Probably people are going to unsubscribe to my channel after this. <laughs> no way, dude! You should get more subscribers because of that. <laughs> You should do a review because we knew somebody who was supposed to do a review and never did. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm a sucker for that. Everybody has that guilty pleasure. I know I'm not the only one that's uh, read uh, a crappy book and actually en enjoyed. Although, I should say, and I'm going to end it with this uh, interesting tidbit, I sold it simply because I didn't like it and i had to stop at issue 20 which i think um who, 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 jesus who wrote red hood and the outlaws i forgot scott lovedell scott, scott lovedell thank you uh scott lovedell uh ruined teen titans and ruined uh, uh the premise of red hood and the outlaws because on paper it sounds fantastic you get three characters and you pair them up into wild crazy adventures and even though he left the book i was uh, I, I was continuing uh, the book. I was continuing uh, my re uh, readathon, and at some point, I'm like, you know what? This this is not for me. Which at that point, uh, it was a little bit too late. Thankfully, I found a good friend of mine, uh, kind of a, a, a horrible deal that I made with him, and I sold all the comic books, and he was happy to do uh, business with me. So I got rid of that uh, atrocity and moved on. But I still remember it fondly. I still remember Red Hood and the Outlaw. That is some admission. Yeah, tell me. I'm only human. <laughs> you, you, you love your guilty pleasure. Well, that's what this show's about. Guilty pleasure. I'm surprised there wasn't any Aquaman talk during that, Gio. He doesn't feel guilty about that at all. No, no. He's the shit. He's the best DC superhero ever. And y'all can suck it if you don't like it. I don't care. <laughs> Throwing it down. All right. How about you, Gabe? Do you have a uh, guilty pleasure books? Well, it's hard to really call them guilty pleasures because I don't feel what I like is bad or I don't feel really bad about reading them. But I do have, I got a small stack here and I'll run through it really quick because I don't want to eat up everybody's time going through all this. But I do have books that uh, I will get uh, kind of the side eye look whenever I talk about it. It's really hard to kind of bring these book up in public. So why not just bring them up on the internet with everybody else? No, right? this must be crossed. Uh, there's crosses involved. I'm, I was going to say that later. Cross is 100% involved in a uh, pack of books. Uh, but anybody who knows me or subscribes to my channel or um, about what I post on the omnibus boards, you know I'm uh, a 90s fan. The 90s are... Uh, my golden age for comic books. So one of the greatest storylines ever in the 90s, and I know I'm going to get the hate, and that's what this stack is really about, is just everybody can hate my taste in comics, is the entire run of Heroes Were Born. <laughs> that includes The Avengers by Rob Liefeld and Jeff Loeb. Oh, boy. 
which is great. I actually own original artwork from this <laughs> book. I have original Rob Liefeld artwork in my in my house. That's cool. Um, you also have the infamous Captain America run by Rob Liefeld. Ooh. Is that where he's got the super pumped up chest? Yeah, this is a big titty uh, Captain oh. America. Oh, that's where that image is from. Yeah, that's where this is from, or where that's from. This is also by uh, Jeff Loeb, uh, Chuck Dixon, and uh, Rob Black. <laughs> so, cool stuff there. Can you show us an image from that book? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm noticing a pattern, Jeff Loeb. Here, I just looked through this badass uh, Modoc image. Wow. Uh, what else we got rocking in here? Because uh, Rob Life only did about the first like five issues, and then he got fired from uh, from the book. Well, thank goodness. Here's some cool ass uh, Red Skull images. That Red cool. Skull is so nineties. Uh, he did a uh, he kind of did a Frank Miller, and turned um, a sidekick into a, a female. So this is a female Bucky that they had in here. Kind of the same way uh, Dark Knight Returns. And yes, I'm comparing this to Dark Knight Returns. Uh, the, way, <laughs> the way Frank Miller made a, got a, a female Robin uh, sidekick, we have a female Bucky sidekick. Look at that hair. Yeah. I'm trying to find the big titty image, but I always have a hard time finding it. <laughs> he does have a puffed out chest. He does, and that's so infamously hated. I wish I could find that page. I'd buy it. I would spend good money to own that original. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I would. Dare that's to such say, a famous image. Yeah, it's part of comic book history, whether it's good or not. Uh. Yeah, there's some, this is this is great, Rob Liefeld. Just this is back where everybody was known for in the '90s being extreme, and everything was super action packed. Uh, this is great stuff, and these these trades are turning into wireless. I mean, they're really hard to find. Wow, really? Yeah, they are. Well, nice. they only made ten of each. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, so that's Avengers. You got Jim Lee's Fantastic Four from The Heroes Were Born. I've never read that. No, this is beautiful artwork in here. I mean, it's fantastic, just Jim Lee work in here. Let me find a good image. <clears throat> hey, this is this bitching ass Doctor Doom spread. That looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And I love this. This is all like, I mean, the story behind all this is uh, Marvel outsourced all their top characters. They took them off the boards and outsourced them to, uh, you know, the boys at Image to kind of puff this stuff back up. And this is right after the Onslaught story where all these heroes disappeared. All the Avengers disappeared, Captain America, uh, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, they all just disappeared out of the 616. And they were in this little pocket universe, which was the Heroes of Born universe. And then we have Iron Man. Who drew it? Who drew it? This is uh, Will Pistachio. Pistachio. Mm -hmm. Pistachio. Pistachio. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the whole thing kind of was a big event when they all came back in uh, Heroes Return, which is awesome. This is written by Peter David and uh, Chris Claremont. Mm. And the art is by Salvador La Roca. I mean, he still knew how to draw. Because now Salvador La Roca likes to just kind of trace TV screen images. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. I mean, this uh, this is the stuff that my teenage years was built on.
So Heroes Are Born, there's my 90s love. Because I absolutely love everything in the 90s, including the Clone Saga. I need to get that omnibus. A guilty pleasure. Uh, this is less disgusting, maybe. Uh, is I love Mega Man and Sonic the Hedgehog. These are fantastic books put out by uh, Archie, of all people. And Archie recently just lost a license to both of these characters. So now these books are gone. You can't find them anywhere anymore. They're completely mm. off the shelves. They're completely off of like IST and Amazon and, and things like that. So, But this one is a team-up. It's called Worlds Collide. And it's a team-up between Mega Man and Sonic. And as you can see on the back, you get all the Sonic characters, all the Mega Man characters, and just one big, you know, save the world domination storyline. That looks awesome. Yeah, this is, this is great that. stuff. This is, uh, it's, it's, again, it's a guilty pleasure because it's so kitty and stupid and it's, you know, anamorphic, you know, characters, which I know Jess would probably enjoy with Sonic. Sonic? Yeah, Sonic is all about uh, anamorphic animals. Oh, cool. You love so much. Yes, I do. How expensive is that book nowadays? Uh, if you can find it, I think it still goes for cover. Cover's 30 bucks. You can probably find it cheap, but you got to eBay it or something like that right now. I'm going to try and hunt them down. Hunt them down, dude. They're great books. Like, all the Mega Man books yeah. are fantastic. The art is fun. It's super colorful. Uh, they follow the video game storylines and everything like that. It just It's too bad Archie lost the license because now Archie has nothing besides just their Riverdale Archie. Archie type stuff right now. And who bought the uh, license? for the I, uh, IDW. So I'm going to see what they're going to do with that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And speaking of IDW, one of my absolute favorite books is Gemini Holograms. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know you're a big proponent of that. Yeah, this is a great, great book. Um it's uh, drawn by uh, Sophia Campbell, who is actually a transgender uh, comic book creator. But I have this uh, outrageous edition, uh, oversized hardcover. And so, why is that a guilty pleasure? Because it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> girls book that only little girls are supposed to read and enjoy. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's based off an old 80s cartoon that was just geared towards women or young girls and rock music and stuff like that. It looks beautiful. Oh, the hardcovers. IDW makes the best hardcovers. I've said that mm. many times before, and mm -hmm. I stick to it because of, because of this. And if anybody was a kid in the 90s, you might remember, or in the 80s, this is made up to look like a trapper keeper. Yep. That, was a, that looks like one. Yep. This is the same artist. If anybody read Glory, uh, same artist that did Glory. Um, I forgot her name when she was uh, a, a male still, but yeah, it's really cool and interesting. Great story, great art. Just, I mean, this is all around great series that really nobody talks about, except people who collect My Little Pony. Exactly. <laughs> and I like these kinds of books. I like teenage angsty books. Um, Things like Runaways, things like Lumberjanes, things like that, I really, really enjoy. That's awesome. And then the best stuff ever right now. <laughs> oh. I knew it. Cross, yeah, I have to talk about Cross. I try to talk about Cross in every video I do, but this <laughs> is the opportunity to actually kind of showcase what's going on. Uh, I have the first three uh, series in hardcover. Volume one is actually really expensive. This is like a hundred dollar book or something outrageous like that. Wow. Yeah. But if you want just disgusting, uh, over the top zombie stories, if you're okay with uh, stories about guys getting stabbed and then a group of zombies raping the stab wounds, then oh. this is the kind of book for you. <laughs> what that really happens in that book? Yeah. Oh my god. Stuff like that. Um, That's like the least objectionable thing that happens. Oh. There's a guy in here who just walks around with a giant horse cock named Horse Cock, and he slaps <laughs> <him>. <laughs> Yeah, that book's unbelievable. 
no, this that's... scene right here, they're tearing this guy apart and they're having sex with the stumps. Oh, great. This is on my channel. So now <laughs> I'm going to get kicked off YouTube. <laughs> Copyright strike right there. Yeah. But no, I mean, this is my good. This is the, the book that, I mean, I know me and Justin talked about it that just keeps his hidden or he, maybe he threw them in the flood. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, yeah, they're hidden. I still have them. But I love it. This is, I mean, it's, it's, it's really pushes the envelope. It's very uh, animalistic and uh, violent, but there's actually just really great stories involved in the cross universe. Uh, I got volume one and three here, mainly because these are my favorites. Volume three is written by David Lapham, who does stray bullets and if you've ever read Stray Bullets, you know that his stuff is messed up. Like, this poor guy probably had a puppy die every day of his life. <laughs> <laughs> but volume three of The Cross, which is called Cross Psychopath, is not really about the cross uh, creatures themselves. It's about an actual normal person, normal person, who, uh, due to some weird jealousy, tricks other people into being killed and eaten by by the cross in order for him to uh, find a package that he's looking for. And when you realize what's in this package that he made everybody hunt down for him, you're really going to just kind of gross yourself out. But cross, 100% cross. Like part of my brain says like, ooh, that sounds like really interesting. But like the other 90% is like, nah, man, you're good. No, 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 check it out. Oh, you just, just go with your animal instincts. That's what this book is all about. <laughs> oh, it really is. Yeah. There's even a series uh, more recently that they did, which is really an interesting storyline where a comic book store was having a signing with a female artist and the cross outbreak happens. So the workers of the comic book store and the comic book artists uh, kind of trap themselves into the comic book store to stay safe for like a year while this whole thing is going on. And during that time, it's really fucked up, but you mean think about it, it's kind of just the way things are, especially with it was a very meta idea of the comic book industry. Uh, these store workers, if you ever watched Misery or read the Misery book, kind of follows that where these store workers uh, kept the female artist at gunpoint and forced her to continue writing her book just for them. And at the same time, just kind of like forced to rape their, I mean, it's always forced rape, of course, but it's always just like, these terrible things that they did to her to force her to write the stories they wanted. And that's a really kind of interesting topic and outlook of the current comic book industry where people aren't happy unless the stories going on in comics fit their needs and what they think should be going on. Mm. In story lines. Interesting. That is and interesting. A approach and respect towards female creators in the industry as well. And then my last one, just to kind of just burn this off real quick, um, kind of stop talking about zombie rape and things like that, <laughs> is the most important magazine to ever come out in the comic book industry, <laughs> Wizard Magazine, everybody. Um, I don't know if, Jill, if you were, if you ever got into Wizard, or if you were like reading comics and Wizard was coming out towards the end, but I'm almost positive just had to have been picking up Wizard on a monthly basis. You oh, have, yeah. If you were reading or collecting comics at the time. Absolutely. This was the internet at the time. This is the bleeding cool news drama of the 90s. This is where you got all your information and interviews, price guides, and everything like that. Okay. It was a big deal. Oh, yeah. You couldn't look every month to see we're in the top 10 now, which writers are in the top 10, and what, what's the top 10 books. And that's how stores would price their books out or, you know, things like that and order their books. Very huge proponent of, of Wizard. I hear they're coming back, but kind of a digital form, uh, which is too bad. But really, the Wizard magazine kind of uh, guided comic books through uh, the 90s into the early 2000s. Nothing, nothing would happen if it wasn't in a Wizard magazine. When did they shut down? Know. Or when did they stop uh, publishing the magazine? I want to say 2012, 2010, right before New 52 came out. Then I might have, yeah, I, I probably picked up a magazine or two back in the day, probably like mid-90s. Oh, yeah, 90s. in the 90s, it was the shit. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. And they always had a gatefold cover. This is a bitch and ass Stephen Platt profit cover. Nice. And I think I still have the poster in here. I have the poster. That's the poster of the cover. I can't open it, but I need to. I need to pull out the poster and frame that because it's such a bitch and ass poster of the cover. Mm -hmm. I remember this one had a contest. I don't know if you could tell, but there's a bunch of bullet shells, bullet casings all across the cover. Everywhere. There was a contest where you would win the original art for the cover if you counted all the bullet shells correctly. <laughs> cool. Yeah, this stuff is great, man. I love, I love the Wizard Magazine. And now it's fun to kind of go through it and look at the price guides and see what books were priced at at the time. Things like that. But... Those are my guilty pleasures. These are the books I love, and I don't really get a chance to talk about because uh, if I bring it up in, with anybody else, I kind of just get weird looks and people just walk away from it. <laughs> but you'll be surprised how much cross I sold when I used to work in a comic book store. I, I would pedal that stuff out all day long. I bet you would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well. Stop <clears throat> that, Jess. What do you got? Naked, <laughs> naked women. Oh, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> my guilty pleasure is good girl art also known as cheesecake art um i love this is bruce tim's book and i'm making sure that i can pull something up that i can show um this is uh, uh was a gift from the fabulous mike noah can't show that can't show that i can show this <laughs> Uh, but this is very hard to find. This is the Bruce Tim oversized uh, hardcover called Naughty and Nice. And it's just gorgeous stuff. And so my guilty pleasure is going to consist of all kinds of good girl art. Uh, there's a place called Brand Studio Press that uh, is going out of business. And they had a ton of this stuff. And they had a going out of business sale that's still going on for the next couple of days. And um, so I bought a ton of stuff from there. And this is uh, a book. Um, Portadas Fernando, King Size Queens, highlighting Fernando Vincente, uh, his art in this one. These are some magazine covers he did nice. back in the day when this was a really cool thing. Uh, let's see. And another one I got was J. Scott Campbell's Blue Beauties. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this stuff's really cool. Uh, that guy now just draws Disney princesses for a living. Is that right? Yeah. Um, well, his stuff is really cool. And, I, of course, I love the statues that I have that are based on his art. Oh, your uh, softcore uh, statues? <laughs> <laughs> My wife just – I don't even know that she calls them – I think she calls them soft porn. Um, uh <laughs> Those are um, the Spider-Man ones. I have Black Cat and Mary Jane and Gwen uh, were based on his creations. Here's some more good J. Scott Campbell stuff. That's awesome. Wasn't yeah. There, wasn't this book just like uh, like some website just had a couple more left and there was like a big, big hustle for him right now? I'm sorry? I, I thought I saw something on the boards where a website had a bunch of these kind of that's uh, yeah that's brand studio press exactly um, that was where that that's where I got um, these books um, here's some black cat oh that's the one from the statue right um, no 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 that's no not not, not quite but they're good images of Black Cat. Those comics, those Amazing Spider-Man comics with that Black Widow cover is expensive. <clears throat> what about them? They're expensive books. Those uh, J. Scott Campbell cover books on, on Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. 
They go here's, for they go for money. Here's the Terry Dodson bombshells that I got. Because I love Terry Dodson's art. Um, this is a lot of sketches. And this is a real sketchbook type of thing. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. I missed your pickups, Just. Did you get the uh, Terry Dodson Harley Quinn Deluxe? I did. Okay. I did. And I also got the Harley Quinn... Um, the Harley Quinn uh, Omnibus, the great new 52 run that all should be judged by whether they own it or not. <laughs> yeah, you got to judge people on, do you like the Harley Quinn and do you like Napoleon Dynamite? Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I also like Phil Nato. Is that how you say his last name? Uh, oh, he has a book? Phil yeah. Noto, I think it goes Noto? Wow. Oh. Yeah, this is his book right here. Nice. I think I have a, I have two books by him. Um, but this, I, and this is just uh, various things that he's published. Um, I just really love his art. I loved his run on Black Widow. That was great. Mm -hmm. So this is. Um, the stuff. If if you're interested, it's Brand Studio Press that had so many of these. These are like five bucks a piece, and these some of these are already waylets on. Um, now this is a book. This is pretty gratuitous, um, but it's also a story. It's got a bunch of stories in it, um, which I'm using to justify my purchase of it. Called Mandy's Shorts, and it's just a. Uh, it's just gratuitous chick. This chicken shorts all the time. I have a couple. Uh, I have a couple sketchbooks of hers of that. Oh, do you? Yeah, I met the artist at a San Diego Comic Con, and he did like sketches in them for me and stuff. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Um, and then it goes on to tell a story. Here's the story of how she lost her bathing suit or something. So you can tell that it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like empowered. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly right. So that's well, Mandy's shorts, which is really... Feeling, uh, What's that now? Uh, shoot, what was I going to say? Oh, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to go now to the website and, and buy those books. Yeah, the art I'm looks gonna, fantastic. Yeah, it really is. Um, this is David Palumbo's book. I got two of his. Now, I don't know how much of this I can show... His he takes his models. These are models from real life, and they they sometimes um, have comments on on his art of them. I can't show that. 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 Oh dear! You can tell this is a really good book because I can't show you any of it. And yeah, he's got. Sketches on okay, okay, I can show you this. This is just behind. But he's got art on traffic tickets and airplane barf bags and just wherever he felt he could sketch. So this is some really beautiful painting. That is nice stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna do a vid on this tomorrow. Um here's some stuff that he does on receipts. Which I think is a cool concept. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a vid on it tomorrow and see if I can get it out in time for people to go to Brand Studio Press and, and, and get some of this stuff. It's dirt cheap right now. This is another book by him. This is Quickie Number Two. Can't show that. Can't show that. <laughs> I can show this, which is really cool. Just big. Uh, Chunks of black pen, almost magic marker, it looks like. I can't show that. Uh, I can show this part. Because she's got a shirt on there. This is beautiful, too. Uh, let's see, I can show this part. Uh, 
Um, okay, I can show this. So this is some really nice stuff. It was like five or ten bucks for thirty dollar books. Is this all like oil painting stuff, or what kind this of is? Yeah, this is all oil on paper, oil on panel, oil on canvas, oil on plexiglass. Uh, let's see, this is oil on illustration board. I can't show you the other page, but I can show you this page. So this is really beautiful work. I'm not, I mean, I wasn't familiar with the artist, um, except to um, check out his images online before I bought it. I and um, some sketchbooks, they're, they're great. You can find them really nice at comic cons and stuff. Yeah, so that's my guilty pleasure is, uh, wait, did I show this? What is this? This is um, another one, Coquetere, Coquetere, Ludwig Alizon. This is like concept to fin finish drawing. And... Yeah, these are almost cartoony, but they're still really beautiful. I was very uh, just seeing the pussycats on that. I one. was just thinking that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is my guilty pleasure. I love collecting these books. Unfortunately, I lost the Frank Cho books that I just purchased. Oh. I lost. I just lost those in the flood. Uh, that was. Got, sorry. Which ones did you have? I had the um, the first two, I think. It was, um, I, I, you know what? I, I didn't even own them for more than a week before I lost them, so I can't remember what they were called. The uh, drawing beautiful, beautiful women. Um, no, it was two other. It was two. It was two in a series. Maybe it was like Cho on women or something. I maybe I can look it up real quick. Well, he's going to be at the, the store. He's going to do a signing at, at the store I work at pretty soon. So I'll see if he has any of that stuff with him. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, let's see. Frank Cho. I think it's called Women Only. Like Women uh, Selected Drawings. and. You're right. Women Drawings and Illustrations, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Yep. Selected okay. Drawings and Illustrations. Because I have the uh, drawing beautiful women that he did for Kickstarter or on Kickstarter. This is the first book that I had that oh, got okay. washed away. Um, I, they're not hard to get. Well, maybe they are in hardcover. I think in hardcover, I had them in hardcover for, you know, a hot minute. So I may get them in... Um, Let's see, hardcover. What are they asking for that book? Oh, that's not too bad. I might be able to get them again, 30 bucks, like new, used off of Amazon. So I might be able to find those again. All right. Well, let me know. I'll keep an eye out for you. I mean, All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a fan of his stuff. So I'll just have Frank Chill write in there, like, sorry about the flood or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. Uh, you can see that the Batcave 3.0 is around me now, so I'm getting it back in shape. There's still boxes out there, as you can see. Oh, wow. Still boxes, but... Um, yeah, little by little. Yeah, I'm taking it day by day. I'm knocking out 10 or 20 boxes a day, and Jeez. when you got 150 boxes, that's a lot. Oh, man. I, oh, I, I hope I never have to move and pack up these things in boxes again. I, for a minute, my wife and I were thinking, everything's in boxes. Maybe we should just box up everything in the house and sell it. But um, we only thought about that for a minute. Jess, Frank Cho is at Baltimore Comic Con next Friday. Oh, is that next Friday? Wow. Oh, there you go. John Wilson just said that. Um, okay. 
Well, those are our guilty pleasures. Um, you guys want to do question Q and A for five or ten minutes? If anybody has questions any or uh, questions for us, yeah. Sure. I mean, we already talked about all the filthy stuff we like. Yeah, yeah. That's we pretty filthy. much bared our souls. <laughs> That's not filth. It's art. Yeah, and art is subjective, and I like what I like. Yeah, and I'm gonna. So, speaking of uh, Dean Diego, I got a couple pick up scribbles. Oh, yeah. nice. And then I think it's volume one. Did a cool little sketch in there for me. <laughs> nice. So, same thing as yours. There's a bunch of just hot chicks and babies. It's kind of weird. Babies? <laughs> yeah. It's just That's a odd. textbook of just like. You know, ugly dudes next to hot chicks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they'll take a bunch of just kind of like cool warm up stuff, but. Well, let's see. Little babies. Uh, since we're talking about art and Frank Cho, uh, any of you guys read uh, Jungle Girl? Uh, no, I saw that on Amazon and I was thinking of getting it. Because, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm like, I, I don't know. I, you can, on, right yeah, on Amazon, you can look through like half the book practically, and it's really interesting. But I don't know that he drew it. I think he wrote it. And one of his, his artists, stuff? sorry? Is that Jungle Girl? Is that the Bud Root stuff? Am I might think of something else. Who, who does it say illustrated it, Gio? Uh, it says Frank Cho and Doug uh, Murray, I think. I, I think Cho wrote it, and the other guy is drawing it Okay. No, in I'm sorry, Frank Cho's style. I'm sorry. I was thinking of Cavewoman. Oh, well, it's easy to get those two mixed up. Yeah. Well, it says on Amazon, Jungle Girl Omnibus. So it piqued my interest. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I, I flipped through that on Amazon, and it looked interesting. It's still available on IST. Jungle Girl is. Oh, Jess, did you ever finish reading the uh, that Batman Arkham Asylum? I did, yeah. I talked about it last Friday on Riley's and my two-man show of Omni Bros Live. I loved it. Oh, okay. Good to hear. I also, I also did a vid on, video on it. Yeah, I really loved it. I gave it five root beers, I think, or at least four root beers. You poured four root beers on? No, no, no. I gave it four out of five root beers. That's a good sign. I'm surprised your uh, your guilty pleasure wasn't uh, Nightfall. <laughs> that ain't a pleasure. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, my heart. Oh, I'm... <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Have you heard about Strangers in Paradise coming to the big screen? I feel it would be better as a TV series. Uh, that's, all that's all me. Yeah, it's all you. Man. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I kind of agree with that. It would it it would lend itself to like three or four seasons of television if it's done right. Um, yeah, I think that's a. I agree with that sentiment. I wonder why they they go the movie route as opposed to like TV series for these things. Uh, I don't know. Roman Guerrero says, my school doesn't treat comics as books and won't let me do book projects on them. I've been fighting this for a while and I was wondering your opinion on it. Uh, my opinion is best of luck to you. I, it's hard to change minds on comics like that. Uh, I would say keep fighting the good fight, but it's hard when you're the lone voice in a school full of narrow-minded people. I say burn your school down to the ground. That's the kind of school. <laughs> and then throw a copy of Crossed on the ashes. That's right. Um, no, don't do that. That that's, that wouldn't be cool. I would say just do a project on, on your own just as a side project and hand it into your teacher. Yeah. But make it, make it like, don't make it like X-Men or, or something like that. Do Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, something that can be, Easily defended as literary. Yeah, you know, so do that's a good idea. That. 
some of those uh, award-winning books. Yeah, like Strangers in Paradise. Yeah, like the cross. <laughs> Can you imagine? Those guys on YouTube said I should do this. <laughs> We're clearly the experts, so it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Or you can just show them a bikini uh, Starfire and Red Hood and the Outlaws. The teacher will be fine with it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I remember when uh, it was funny when I was first starting to read comics. I used to watch uh, Boy Meets World. I don't know if you guys remember that show, Boy Meets World. Mm -hmm. I do remember that show. My daughter watched it. Yeah. So the teacher they had, Mr. Turner, he assigned everybody to read the X-Men as just kind of a uh, social commentary on racism and uh, accepting everybody for who they are and, and things like that. So you can always do things and take it that route. You know, not don't just make it, you know, Wolverine can beat up Hulk or, or, you know, something like that. Make it kind of what the comics were really about and kind of the social commentary they were trying to make at the time. That's a good idea. Uh, like Civil War, it could be about like registration and how we want to register Muslims and you know things like that. You know, there's ways, of, there's different ways of going about it. If you if you treat it as a literary art form, then I think your teachers would appreciate it. And you might be able to change some minds, and maybe one day you'll catch your, your teacher in the break room reading Cross. <laughs> <laughs> it always Never. comes back to that. It always Never. comes back. Love it. <laughs> well. We're not getting any questions. Everybody just, they're just staring at us. They're just looking at us, yeah. yeah. Come on, you guys, interact with us. Or else it's time to end this. What's the, uh, what's the chat? Hey, chat people, all the party people up in the chat, what's your guys' guilty pleasures? That's a good question. Ooh, somebody mentioned Liberty Meadows. I love that. That's pretty good. Yeah, Frank chose Strip. That is good. Yes. Yeah, we'll ask the audience questions. What are your guys' guilty pleasures that you like? Good idea. Yeah. And even those who are watching this on like a, a repeat run, uh, you know, throw it down in the chat or in the uh, comment section. I have the book right here. If anybody's uh, curious about it. Oh yeah, let's comment. let's see some eye candy from that. Uh, hold on. I don't know if you can see it. I can't see myself because the book's covering the whole screen, but. Yeah, we can see it. Not in the chat or in the uh, comment. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. Pretty cool. I haven't read all of it, but what I've uh, peeked at, it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty. Uh, I, I think he did that strip. He went to University of Maryland right near me. Mm -hmm. I think he did that strip starting when he was a student. And he sold it to the Washington Post, and they started printing it. And that's how he got his start, I think, right out which of college. Is, which is great, because if that's when he got started, I'm like, Jesus, I can only draw, like, stick figures. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, really funny stuff, if anybody wants to check it out. Yeah, and he definitely can draw women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, yeah, like I was saying, I have the Drawing Beautiful Women book. Oh, and I can't do the cover because there's, there's titties on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Back cover is pretty nice as, as well. And what's cool about this is that being on Kickstarter, you got a lot of cool extras. And one of the extras, if anybody's into like cosplay, I don't really care too much about cosplay girls, but this just came with it, is a, a sexy drawing of the Ivy Doom Kitty cosplay. Oh, girl. yeah, I know her. Wow. I know of her, I mean. That is cool. Is the, is the inside color or black and white or both? Uh, let's see. <coughs> There's a bunch of just extra stuff in here you brought or you put in here. It's, it's a little bit of both. It's actually like an art book, like how to draw as well, kind of. Oh. Let me take this dust jacket off so we can show something that's not titties. Hey, it's just human biology, man. Come on. Yeah, it's just anatomy. It's like insights of how to draw, like, you know, shading and shapes. Ooh, that looks badass. That, that does. Awesome. The Reaper thing. Love it. 
Uh, I can't show that. I can show this. So there's some cool painting stuff in here too. Like Frank Cho just has so many different styles and mediums that he uses. And it's all really showcased in this book. I love the what fact that he uh, trolled everybody with the, um, the Spider-Woman parody covers. <clears throat> oh, those things are the best. <clears throat> yeah, so many people got so upset about him, and I just laughed my ass off because it's just hilarious that people get upset about these things. What are we talking about? <clears throat> Hold up, I got a. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> uh, when um, Manara did the uh, Spider Woman butt cover that oh, people yeah. went, got all upset about, uh, Frank was trolling people on the internet and doing like parody covers and all that stuff. Uh, with Spider Gwen and Harley Quinn and all these characters, and people got really upset, and they just started uh, criticizing uh, Frank Cho, and just it was just horrendous, in my opinion, really stupid. <laughs> Mike F asks, "Is the Silver Age Green Lantern omnibus worth the pickup?" Uh, my answer is only if you like Silver Age Green Lantern. Um, <laughs> Because it's very silver agey, so it's going to be, you know, really wordy, and um, the the art's great. A lot of it's Gil Kane art, um, but um, I I love it. But that's my era that I grew up in, so I I have nostalgia for it, like Gabe has for the '90s. So um, if you like the Silver Age, then yeah, it's a great representative of it. You actually have a uh, Frank Cho print from the uh, Spider Gwen butt butt parody. Ooh, nice. Oh. <laughs> and what's funny is people were complaining and being all crazy about this, and even like Robbie Robbie Rodriguez, the artist for Spider Gwen, like semi threw a threat that he was <laughs> yes. going to be a Frank Cho. <laughs> Jeez. That uh, Frank Cho made these prints. I mean, he was selling them. All the money that he got from these prints, he donated to, I think it was like a women's rights organization or, or something like that. Nice. So, Aha on you guys. <laughs> uh, I, saw a I saw a question in the chat here. Uh, what's your uh, Doom fella? Yo, what up, Doom fella? Uh, what's y'all's? He said it as y'all's. Favorite, uh, favorite soda, non-root beer? Uh, I, I haven't, like, I don't drink soda. I, it's been like seven, six to seven years, so I'm out. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't drink soda at all. I just drink water. That's it. Yeah, dude, I haven't drank soda in like two months, dude. Like, I've been treating myself better and trying to lose weight and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but I still have a... Uh, I like kind of the off-brand soda, not off-brand. Like I don't like you know, People's Choice or or whatever <laughs> the brand is. But uh, I like uh, Cactus Cooler is always really cool, and uh, RC Cola. Hmm. Yeah, I like Mexican Coke. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about soda here, Jess. <laughs> It's made with cane sugar, so it's really good and doesn't make my teeth hurt. Yeah, booger sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are way behind me. <laughs> way behind me. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, I just did a birthday purchase. I'm really excited about it. Uh, as, of, as we were doing the show, I was at the Brand Studio website. And I got, uh, I got three books. Oh, good for you. What'd you get? Yep. I got the Blue Beauties from J. Scott Campbell. I got uh, My Marvels from Humberto Ramos. And I got Groundworks from Mark Brooks. Those are three of my favorite comic book artists. Nice, dude. Awesome. And you got Super. good prices on them. Yeah. Uh, the Mark Brooks uh, is $10. The J. Scott Campbell is like $12. And the Humberto Ramos is $10. That's pretty damn cheap. Yeah, uh, these were all books that were going for a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Brooks is going to be doing a signing at the store pretty soon as well. Oh, he's such a badass. Love that dude. We're also getting Dale Keown pretty soon as well. Which oh, is kind of funny. that's cool. He drew the Hulk, right? 
Yeah, I'm gonna ask him about prison. I heard he did all that work in prison. What? Prison? Remember, he disappeared after the pit. After he did a pit, he disappeared for like 12 years, and apparently he was in prison. Damn. Oh, and you're gonna ask him about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask him to see if he just shanks me with like a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome he could get his uh, interview on the channel that's okay well that's the thing I could probably see if I get these guys to do uh, intros for my channel mm -hmm. oh I'm sure Mark will do it he's pretty cool with everybody I got a big box of sketchbooks down here that I'm digging through see if I can, what I can pull out there's Matt Miranda in the chat Hey, Yo, what up, Matt? Matt? I got a uh, Francis Manipal sketchbook. Ooh, nice. This is a hardcover, too. Mm. Where'd you get that? Uh, oh, actually, this is sketched in it, too. Uh, a friend of mine just gave me a whole box of sketchbooks about a year ago. So this has, actually has a flash like sketch in it. Oh, that's bitching. And what's funny about these sketchbooks is they're not sketches. Like these are full-on like commission pieces that they work really hard on and put in these books. But I'm not complaining. That's super badass. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at this Batman Superman. That is amazing. <coughs> I'm just gonna dig through sketchbooks for a second until we get more questions or whatever. David Codd asks, what would you guys rank as your top syndicated comic strips? Calvin and Hobbes. And Peanuts. Uh, Garfield. Garfield? He hasn't been funny since 1972. I remember going to school and I had the backpack <laughs> and the pencils and the notebooks and the plushy toys. I love Garfield. Simply because <laughs> he likes to eat. He's lazy. Even though I'm not a cat person, but I love Garfield. <laughs> he hates hey, Mondays. You, know, you like family yeah. circus. <clears throat> uh, you know, I didn't really read too many comic strips. Uh, there was one called Duplex that I liked a lot. Uh, shit. Uh, Beetle Bailey. Uh, what was that one? Uh, it was like a old '70s hippie guy, very social commentary like. I don't know. I wasn't really too big in comic strips. Mm, I've read Garfield without Garfield. David Codd, yeah, he's right. <laughs> Garfield without Garfield was a great is a great um, thing on the internet. Mm -hmm. It is modern day genius. I loved it. Got a Art Adams sketchbook. I tried to find Adam Hughes sketchbooks, and all there is are San Diego Comic Con little things for every year. They release something every year, and they're really expensive on eBay. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, Adam Hughes is nuts. Like anything Adam Hughes goes for crazy money. I love his stuff, but I can't afford any of it. Because I really don't even know what it is. You don't you don't get a real description of it on eBay, and it's not readily available anywhere. Nobody has a video on it on uh, YouTube or something like that. Mm, I don't know. That's a good question. I'll check that out. I want to get uh, Ryan Oatley's uh, art book, and it's been quite a, an odyssey to get it uh, because. Some websites, like, they don't know the thing about uh, Puerto Rico and it being part of the U.S. It's a commonwealth or whatever. It's a colony. It's still a territory. Uh, and they feel entitled to charge double or triple the amount of a regular state, and that sucks. So, uh, for example, that book, I think uh, any of you guys could get it for, like, 5 to $10 shipping. Uh, the store wants to charge me like $35 for it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to pay double the amount. Well, why don't you just have one of us buy it and send it to you? I know, but I'm lazy, and I haven't done it yet. 
<laughs> Which ones are you looking for? <laughs> uh, the pigtails one, the one he did recent, the recently. Okay. Um, I forgot the name of the book. It's pigtails and monsters or something. I do know it comes with a like a sketch and it's signed and everything. And I love Ryan Oatley because of Invincible. So, but I'm not gonna pay. Like the book is already like thirty dollars. I'm not gonna pay more for shipping for a damn art book. Sorry. Yeah. What? Well, um, how lazy do you have to be? I mean, all. It, I mean, if you ask me, I'm gonna be the one doing all the work. All you have to do is ask me, and I'll get it for you. Right? You're saying you're so lazy, you you can't even get up the energy to ask me. <laughs> I just keep. Uh, I don't know. There's some new stuff I'm doing, and I just keep putting it off. <laughs> <coughs> Because I have his uh, violence and uh, pinwheels one. Oh, nice. Yeah, I need to get that one, too. That looks awesome. This just turned into an art book episode, guys. Nice. Okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Invincible stuff in here, a lot of the cool Invincible sketches. Like Invincible punching out Power Girl. Oh, oh I don't like that. <laughs> I, if I were to meet Ryan, I would get a uh, Black Bolt and Medusa uh, commission because I think he draws them really damn good. Well, he wants to do a signing at the store, so I'll let you know if he comes by. Nice. Really cool stuff. Yeah, I love his stuff. He's a super nice guy. You know, it's a cool Deadpool. Oh, this is a cool book. Just kind of uh, try to... Sp Put a little spark in your pants to get these uh, sketchbooks to you. Yep, yep. You're doing wonders right now. I need them. <laughs> uh, Don asks us on the chat, if you can have one famous YouTuber on Omnibros Live, who would you have? Uh, Omnidog. That guy's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any famous YouTubers, so I'll have to let you guys handle that. Uh, I don't know. The Chocolate Rain Guy. You know, the Chocolate Rain Guy follows me on Twitter. I don't know his name, but he follows me on Twitter, and that is the craziest thing. He follows Who, uh, my channel. Who's he, who is the Chocolate Rain Guy? It's the guy that did the whole, uh, he was like an internet, one of the first memes for uh, singing the Chocolate Rain song, and he has a really deep baritone voice. Uh, I forgot his name. I don't know. But yeah, he was pretty famous when YouTube first started or something. And he suddenly follows me. I have random ass followers, by the way, on, um, <laughs> on uh, Twitter. I do have that. And I have a couple voice actors, which I geeked out over. I totally fanboyed their asses. And uh, the Mindy Kaling Project show follows me on Twitter. You're kidding. I love that show. I have no idea. I have no idea why but they follow me i'm like okay kind of puts a little pressure on me to you know put out <laughs> content and stuff but um, yeah <coughs> well i think there you go geo you should put out some more content yep i just put out an invincible video if anybody wants to check it out i'm discussing every single invincible hardcover book i just did volume four so that's good Oh, uh, Don says he would like to see someone like Comic Storian on the show. I've seen a couple videos and stuff. That's pretty cool. Also, I am a huge fan of Insidious Swede because I love manga and anime, so I would love to do uh, some sort of video uh, with that guy. Insidious Swede's a cool guy. He's uh, yeah. he's on the board. Yep. Uh, I like to see uh, Riley Moe on the on the, the <laughs> chat often. Like he collects <laughs> omnibuses or something, right? I think so. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I just I, I'm not. I don't follow many people on YouTube. Like I was never a big YouTube person before I started yeah. doing my channel. Even now, I don't really follow many people. I just follow you guys for the most part. Aw. Um, and people in the omnibus community and, and things like that. I like uh. I don't know. You guys ever watch uh movie fights on YouTube? I think mm -hmm. I have seen a couple episodes. Yeah, which is a handful of, uh, of guys, and they usually get, like, celebrities on there, and they kind of just have movie topics that they, they fight over, which is interesting. It'd be cool to have them on here. 
Gio, did you ever watch uh, postmodern jukebox videos? I, didn't I tell you about postmodern jukebox? Or was that Ryan Sace that I mentioned it to? Are, are they the ones that do the covers, the jazz covers? Yeah, or exactly, yeah. They do the vintage covers of songs. I think I've seen a couple of uh, cover songs. Yeah. yeah, I love their stuff. Mm -hmm. David Codd is the one that turned me on to them. There is a YouTube channel that I forgot the name of, but it's from Japan. And it's like traditional Japanese musicians and singers and whatnot covering uh, really popular songs. I don't know if you guys have seen those videos. Uh, like they'll do a taiko drum cover of a uh, uh, Michael Jackson song or something. You know, just really popular uh, American tunes <laughs> with Japanese instruments. It's really cool. I, I recommend it. If I can find it, I'll plug it somewhere. But Hmm. Here's one for Jess. Uh, what is it? Best Marvel Cosmic non crossover stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm when it comes to that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's that's definitely my uh, that's kind of yeah. my right there. Uh, definitely uh, the Jim Starlin, uh, Ron Lim, Silver Surfer that leads up to Infinity Gauntlet, not Infinity Gauntlet it's, itself, but just the stuff that leads up into it. Uh, and that's a beautiful run, as well as oh no, here you go. You want, you want some cool Mar uh, Marvel Cosmic stuff? Uh, the Peter David Captain Marvel run is absolutely beautiful book. And it's all about Captain Marvel getting full on um, cosmic awareness and going cycle and insane because of it. So that's a fun book. I love Marvel Cosmic stuff. So mm -hmm. that's what I would recommend. Because other than that, most Marvel Cosmic stuff is a crossover one way or the other. It all gets tied into a crossover. Yep. You know, all the uh, DNA. Uh, Nova and Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, which is some of the best stuff you're ever going to read, but that all ties into like uh, Annihilation, Annihilation Quest. Uh, what was the first comic that made you want to read more comic books? Probably the first one I ever picked up. I was off to the races after that. Uh, I'm going to say Ultimate Spider Man. It was the first mm. time I was reading a comic book, uh, not just random issues, and I got hooked, and I started collecting books and stuff. Uh, X-Men 25, when Wolverine gets the adamantium ripped out of him, is definitely one of the linchpins of me getting into comics more. Did you guys ever see, um, probably not, did you, do you remember Pepsi cards at all? What was it called? Pepsi cards. Pepsi cards? Like the yeah. soda Pepsi? Yeah, like the soda, yeah. No, I have no idea what that is. Uh, well, I think it was just straight up for like Mexico and Puerto Rico. They did back in the 90s, they, Pepsi did um, like trading cards of Marvel characters. And cool. one of my favorite cards was that scene when they're ripping the adamantium off. Uh, so, yeah. You just said the, the the comic book, and I just had a flashback of me getting the card, so that was pretty cool. That's awesome. I love that series. That's such a good just piece of history that just made me just love comics. And I remember that. That's when I just started following, because I was in the middle of the uh, Fatal Attraction storyline. So at that time, I used to just only read X-Men because of Jim Lee. And then that spurred me off into like Uncanny X-Men and X-Force and – X Factor and all that stuff, and that was it for me. That's that's when I got the uh, that's when I got the itch. Oh, that itch! That itch! That itch is a uh, hasn't hasn't left in like twenty seven years. <laughs> Are any of you familiar with Saucer Country? Um, I did order it because it was recommended to me by Mitchell O'Brien. It's supposed to be great. It's a Vertigo series, and it is supposed to be really good. Um, but I, I mean, I'll have to read it and do a review of it. 
I just bought it on his recommendation. Uh, Nick P wants to know, uh, asking me, what Cosmic Marvel book do I want to get put into an omnibus? Hmm. Uh, definitely that uh, Silver Surfer I was talking about. I would love that entire run of Silver Surfer to be put into multiple omnibus. I have the, I just finished, if you, uh, my last YouTube video I did on my channel was my uh, August haul. And I finally got the last two issues of Silver Surfer from that series. And I now have a complete run of that series. But I would love to have that in the omnibus. It was so many great stories, great writers. Uh, Steve Englehart, uh, Roger Marshalls did some art in there. Ron Lim, Jim Starlin, uh, Tom Grummets, uh, things like that. So great, great series. It really gets no love, I feel. What book do you want to get collected in Omnibus, Jess, just in general? Mm. <clears throat> That's a good question. Omnibus, Omnibus. Uh, Man of Steel. Peter David, uh, wait, no. Um, John Byrne? No, uh, John Byrne. Okay. Yeah, Man of Steel. I'd like to see that collected. I'm going to have to say the rest of, it's not going to happen, but the, the rest of New Avengers from Bendis. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't think Bendis has ever had, besides Daredevil, a second volume of an omnibus. That is weird. Yeah. yeah. There's no Powers second omnibus yet. Mm -hmm. Avengers. Ultimate um, Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. I don't know what's up with that. That's crazy, 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 crazy stuff. Oh, you know what would be great? Aquaman omnibuses or Omnibuy? I thought that didn't they just announce again a release date for the new 52 Aquaman? I, I don't know. They're playing with my emotions. Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> they are they are blue balling you hard, dude. Yeah. I don't, like, it's it gotten to a point where I don't believe anything. Uh, just come out. They got that carrot on the string right ahead of you, dude. <laughs> There's no reason whatsoever for Aquaman Rebirth Deluxe Edition to be canceled. Why? Everybody else gets a freaking hardcover. No, nope, Aquaman doesn't get one. Yeah. But I get it. They're, they're waiting for the movie, I guess. I definitely want, I would definitely be a buyer of any Aquaman New 52 Omni. I haven't read any Aquaman in a very long time since like uh, Waterhand and Hookhand uh, Aquaman. So I'd be down to check out some New 52 rebirth stuff as well oh yeah the new i haven't read the rebirth stuff yet but new 52 was great uh rebirth is just as good um it, it doesn't lose steam in my opinion oh yeah uh inhumans omnibus that's that's true we don't have an, an omni for any inhuman stuff that'd be great too what'd you think of the uh the the two episode movie thing or whatever Oh man, uh, I I had fun because I never had the chance to go to an IMAX theater. This is my second time, so uh, especially watching like a special TV presentation or whatnot. So I, I had fun. Basically, it, the show would have benefited from uh, it being a movie instead of being a, a TV show. But I think people went overboard with the uh, uh, hate on the show and like saying, oh, it's a huge flop. It made zero money. I'm like, dude, it's, it's just a special presentation for fans. It's always meant to be a TV show. You got to judge it once you see the whole package. Uh, but yeah, it could use a shit ton of money because, uh, you know, it's such a bombastic series with uh, alien looking yeah. creatures and crazy superpowers. And the TV show simply doesn't have enough budget for all of that but what if they do try and do i think they do capture the the family dynamic pretty well and everybody's represented at least um close to the original source material uh, where you're not completely lost i think it was it's okay i had fun yeah it's not following any particular storyline which is cool yeah um it, it's it's good for what it is i think it does suffer in the special effects you know, category of things, because uh -huh. that 
the few times that Medusa's hair did anything, it looked pretty bad. Yeah, it looked like um, um, 2010 five FX. <laughs> yeah. And just like people's interaction with uh, Lockjaw were just very awkward and just didn't really match up very well, I noticed. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, outside of that, I mean, it, just, it could use more money for special effects. Like uh, outside shots of Attila look, look weird, but besides that, you were getting a really cool, uh, just refugee slash fish out of water storyline. It sounds like it's going to be. Yeah, it, it, plus um, the TV when, when they do air the episodes is going to have more scenes. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more fleshed out, mm -hmm. and I think like the potential's there. It's just. Damn it, I really wanted a movie instead. And Lockjaw was cute as hell as well. So. <laughs> yeah, even he, he, he has some of the best special effects they had, but just their interaction with them was just weird. It was very just... It was a little like, bit off or, in certain scenes. Yeah, they just weren't quite touching him the right way or looking at him in the right direction, stuff like yeah. that. And the one thing, the one thing I joked about uh, on it on my channel... Uh, since they don't have money for it or the big budget, uh, when you read the Inhumans book, when they go through the whole Terra Genesis thing and whatnot, and they get like their powers and stuff, some Inhumans like they get like super deformed into like monsters and all that stuff. In the TV show, basically everybody is weird-looking humans. That's it. Yeah. Like they might have some few things on their faces and whatnot, but that's about it. So that bummed me out a little bit. Uh, plus, we didn't get to see the whole Alpha Primitive stuff uh, in the coal mines. I, I don't know. Still, it's fun, and the IMAX stuff looks great in Hawaii and whatnot. But it's fun. Go watch it. Will you guys be getting the Hellboy Omnibus? Nope. No. Nope. No. As nope. much as I, I love Hellboy. I don't want a paperback Omnibus. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Even though it's in chronological order, it sounds like a good idea, but I've already got all the Hellboy stuff I can deal with. Yeah. I'm not going to be rebuying it. I think it's more fun to switch back and forth and do your own reading order instead of going, you're the intended one. I don't know. But it really isn't a, a linear story for Hellboy. Yeah. It's all just, right. just uh, uh, like vignettes and snippets and, and things like that. If it was, I only have the first. Uh, library edition. Uh, if this omnibus would have been like a hardcover omnibus, I, I would have just waited out for that. But I think I'll just keep getting the library editions. I think they're going to be like the Conan omnibus. Where it's just like that big fat trade. Yeah. They just do like a colossal Hellboy style one. <laughs> I am getting uh, Hellboy in Hell though. The library edition. That looks amazing. Oh yeah, oh. I'm getting that. Um, uh, Don B, what's the worst omnibus you own? I don't buy shitty omnibus. All the 90 ones are amazing. Where's that? Uh, right below oh. uh, Rocks, where you, I heard good things about. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the worst omnibus you own? Yeah, no, an, an omnibus, I <laughs> have to either have read it before or it comes via 10 different recommendations. Um, yeah, I would not buy a bad omnibus. I don't think they really, these companies put out their, their bad stuff in premium formats like this too often. You know, there's a lot of weird ones out there, like, you know, 90s, you know, first appearances omnibus. Right. Or like the Ultimates omnibus, which was just like the number ones of all the old Ultimate lines, things like that, which is just weird. But I don't think uh companies waste their their money their resources on putting out just their bad stuff uh night nightfall be damned they did that uh 90s omnibus like the first appearances yeah yeah that stuff's weird but you know i wouldn't get it yeah. uh let's see uh top five series of all time you guys got a top five right at the top of your head Fuck, that's hard i top fives Top whatever things are so hard to do. <laughs> they'll change the next time somebody asks me. I got it. Um, I got. Go it. for it. You, you got it. Do it. Uh, yeah, Inhumans, Ultimate Spider-Man, Aquaman, New Fifty Two, Hellboy, 
and and oh my god um shit i don't know uh batman from uh scott snyder um i will say harley oh, quinn new 52 and irredeemable i totally forgot invincible i hate myself now <laughs> <laughs> we hate you too yeah just switch out batman with invincible and i'm done there you go well, great. You guys reminded me of a couple of good ones that I probably would not have remembered. Uh, shit. I always, number one in my book will always forever be uh, Transmetropolitan along with Fantastic Four, yep. along with Invincible, Irredeemable, uh, Transmet Fantastic Four, Irredeemable, Invincible, one more. Fuck. Mm. Uh, uh, Chew, I guess. Oh. That's a good book. Um, is there anything you have in your collection that you haven't read but want to ta uh, tackle next? Basically everything behind me right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I buy a lot more than I, than I can read. Um, it's, uh, I, don't, I just don't want to miss out on these books and I know I'm going to read them. I, I sold my, my singles. And I've just been kind of rebuying those in omnibus form. Tackle, even though I've read it and I know the story pretty well and I just like, just kind of do a refresher on it. I would love to bust open my uh, Hickman Fantastic Force and read those again. Yeah. I think once I get done with my Hellboy uh, readathon, because I'm going to have to stop, uh, I think at Hellboy in Hell, I'm gonna have to stop at a certain place because it not everything's been collected yet. Um, I'm either gonna, I think I'm gonna do the Hickman. I'm gonna do the Hickman uh, run, starting with Secret Warriors, all the way up through Secret Wars and Hick Avengers. Um, so that's gonna take me like a year. <laughs> we should do a book of the month or something. That's a good we idea. All, we should pick a book that we all have or we can get. And, you know, we'll, you know, the last week of the month or something like that, we'll, we'll review it together. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll just do a poll on the uh, Omnibus forum and just let them pick. We'll, we'll pick five books and they can pick it for us. Yep. Oh, we're going to get stuck with Red Hood and the Outlaws or something that way. <laughs> I'm not going to put that on the poll. We, we, we <laughs> And you get a vote on the books you put in the poll. Yeah, Nick Munoz says we should all read Concrete, and I totally agree with that. Riley and I were going to do that a year ago, and we never did do it. <laughs> I've never read Concrete. I don't think I've done anything uh, Paul Chadwick. Uh, I realize now Nick is poking fun at me badly. He's totally jamming me up because that was our book of the month. Yep. We were going to read a book. Of, actually, we were going to read a book a week. <laughs> I remember I bought uh, the book. And I have John it. Wilson. Yeah, I've read Scouts and Singles. It's the most amazing series out there. I should probably put that in my top five. Uh, Scout is, uh, is fucking awesome. Ghost Junka. Yeah, we read one book and it fizzled out. Exactly. We read the first book. Uh, how about this? Uh, Israel Gaten wants to know about the Batman Neil Adams omnibus. Uh, <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down. It's okay. Don't worry about it, Jess. <laughs> Not a fan. Was it what was it? Because they recolored it? Is that what it was? And then in the middle of it was that that weird shitty. I'm gonna say shitty. Yeah, that's not nice. But the uh, um, awkward done Odyssey book. Uh, I the <laughs> there's so many issues with that book. The real thing that bothers me the most is that his going in there and re-inking everything. That's just silly. In a, in his modern way, because his art has changed since back when he was so groundbreaking. Um, and he, he re-inked it in a more modern style, and it loses its impact of what was so important back then. And then, yeah, it's garishly recolored. Um, and then it, of course, has that horrible story Odyssey in it. 
Um, it's just, um, that's not a, that book got destroyed in the flood and it's not a book I'm going to replace. <laughs> I'm just not going to replace it. it. I was so disappointed with it. Um, mother nature gave it a root beer bath for me, but, um, I was just so disappointed with that book. Uh, there's another question from Ow, uh, Nick. I have been going deep into lesser known publishers lately. What are some of your favorite non big three? Is that the one where you said we can't mention image or Valiant or dark horse? I think that was a different one. Okay. But black mask is doing some cool stuff. Black Mass Studios. I want to check out, uh, what was the book you got, Jess? Uh, Black, Black Beetle, was it? Oh, um, yeah, but I think that's by Dark Horse. That's Dark Horse? Still, uh, it looks pretty interesting. I want to check it out. Um, it. Yeah, it's supposed to be great. <laughs> that's a one that Colin O'Neill's big on. I kind of mentioned Dark earlier. Horse. Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, IDW, I think, does great books. Their, um, their Transformers books are fantastic. They also put out those really amazing artist editions, which I think everybody should get a chance to look at one day. Those artist editions are, are incredible. Is that they who put out the Fantastic Four one? Yeah, yeah, all those artist editions basically come out through IDW. Yeah, the Fantastic Four one, I got a Silver Surfer one. David Mazzucchelli, Daredevil, uh, Scott Dumbeard, the, the editor and the guy that does that stuff is just, he's doing God's work. He has given us all a gift and those things come out. Do mm. you have any of them, Jess? You don't have an artist edition, do you? Uh, I don't, no. I'm not, um, I've never been into them. Who publishes um, Giant Days? Well, that's a good question. Let me go look. Is it Boom Studios? I also like uh, Avatar because of Crust. <laughs> but the thing with Avatar is I'm worried that they might be going going under, uh, cutting back. Because the last thing I've seen for them in, in previews, there was nothing really new. And then they were blowing out a lot of their trade paperbacks at five bucks. Wow. Yeah, that was a Boom Studios imprint called Boombox. Boombox. Ah, Boom does okay. good stuff too. Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, they do Lumberjanes, which is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Archie stuff, like I mentioned earlier, but the the Sonic and stuff is gone. The Sonic and Mega Man stuff is gone, but they also still have, kind of still have uh, putting out Life uh, After Life with Archie. Which, if you like good girl art, and I know me and Jess talked about this before, uh, but those uh, Andrew Peepoy covers are, are fantastic on the uh, Afterlife of the Archie books. Um, also does uh, Invader Zim. I love that book. Oh, yeah, you do love Invader Zim. Top Shelf. Top Shelf. They did the... Uh, Fear and Loading in Las Vegas hardcover. They did Exodus County. Yeah, uh, Top Shelf is great. Yeah. Uh, Oni Press. Oni. Oni does uh, uh, Invader Zim. Mm -hmm. Oni Press does uh, Kaiju Mites, which we have here. Yeah. <laughs> what is the plan for Omnidog arranging his collection, or will it still go haphazard and random? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got shamed. I got uh, shamed by Riley last Friday about my uh, my collection tendencies, my organizing, my lack of organization. Um, I I really will take this. I I will take this time to organize it better. I, the, my problem is, I like to have publishers together. But I like to have hardcovers and paperbacks together, and I like to have my omnis together. So it's hard for me to. Um, the only thing I've managed to really organize is my Marvel omnibus section because those are so easy to organize. It just says Marvel omnibus on it, and 
they're all reasonably close to um, a uniform look. Uh, compared to DCs, they're really easy to organize, but DCs are a lot harder, harder to organize. Um, and then I just have a problem, you know, where am I gonna put Boom Studios? Image, how am I gonna do that? I don't know, I know where everything is. So I think that, I don't know. It's such a big job. <laughs> I get overwhelmed by it. Put all your good stuff in the top shelves. Yeah. Well, I had the whole backyard regraded, so that cost a pretty penny. Um, it's all my neighbor's problem now. What's regraded? I don't know what that means. Um, I, I had the backyard, I had it dug up, and um, so now all the water drains away from the house. Okay. Um, and I had it uh, sodded with grass, so there's no more barriers to block the water flow to my neighbor's yards, the natural flow of the water. <laughs> so now they're going to get all the water like they're supposed to. Did you have to pay out of pocket for that, or was that a part of your insurance uh, payout? No, that was I had to pay for that. That was a lot of money. I that was all, it. yeah, that was all just a, ten guys and shovels redoing the whole backyard. So, yeah, I try to get a, a quilt or an estimate to uh, put uh, concrete in my backyard. My backyard is nothing. It's like uh, twenty feet by by ten feet. It's a pretty small backyard. Uh, but they wanted like two thousand dollars to like dig up the rocks and lay down cement, and I don't. I'm not paying that right now. Mm. So I can imagine what it would cost to like basically re re uh, topographically change your backyard. Yeah, that's what I had to do. There's like eight inches difference between my basement and the fence line now, so it's all going to go down that way. Um, but um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know. My organ. I, I do. I really need to take this time to to organize it and make it coherent because it's just. It is pretty haphazard. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's your collection. Whatever you do, what the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, you know, have everything alphabetical and see. That's the other thing. If I have it alphabetical, then I'm going to mix formats, and I don't like that. My uh, my collection before I moved it here into the attic was alphabetical, and you know, you know, you throw your pictures on your on the omnibus form, and people go, "That's weird. Why is it alphabetical?" Because I always just felt if somebody wanted to read a book, they should be able. Same with a comic book store. Like when I ran a comic book store, I, I always did the trade paperbacks and the uh, the single issues all alphabetically, as opposed to broken up by by publishers, because not everybody understands. Batman's DC and Captain America's Marvel and, and stuff like that. Right. And when I looked at it. I wanted somebody to be able to come to my room and went and find the Batman section without it having to be like, oh no, it's in that corner because that's that's DC, you stupid. <laughs> but now I have it uh, mine's all broken up by publishers and stuff too. So we got but it's also in weird orders too. Like mine's broken up by publishers, but then it's also broken up by storyline. Like I have Age of Apocalypse, or no, I have a, a Onslaught mixed in with the trade paperbacks for Heroes Reborn because that's all kind of a together situation for me. Well, if it makes sense to you, that's what counts. Exactly. Uh, we got three questions that we've missed. Oh, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, actually, four questions. Uh, two for Gabe, the other one's for everybody. Uh, Gabe, what FF run would you recommend to someone new to the title? Oh, good question. I get this question a lot, and I always go with the same answer because it's the perfect answer. And that is the Mark Wade, Mike Ringo run. I know the second hardcover is a whale, whale ad. It's, it's pretty hard to find, and it gets a little pricey. But you can always... You can get, get the trade paperbacks instead or Marvel Comics Unlimited or something like that. But if you want to get into Fantastic Four and get an idea of exactly how the characters are, Mark Wade is a genius when it comes down to characterization of the Fantastic Four. Uh, he doesn't make them superheroes because the Fantastic Four are not superheroes. They're adventurers. So they go on a lot of adventures and, and discovery and 
not only discovering the dimensions and different creatures and stuff like that, but a lot about themselves, especially with a little bit of a spoiler, when uh, Dr. Doom kidnaps Franklin and puts him in hell yeah. and what they have to do to save their family and stuff like that. Uh, one of the biggest tearjerker, like heartstring pull stories that you're ever probably going to read is when the Fantastic Four meet God. Oh, that was a great issue. Yeah. So that's the perfect jump on point. Mm-hmm. And just get familiarized with Fantastic Four. And from there, you could jump around. It's not very linear. You know, you could always go do the John Byrne stuff later. You could read Hickman now. You could read Walt Simonson whenever. Uh, things like that. But if you just want to know, get a basic uh, footing on who these characters are and why I love them and why uh, I banned Marvel from my home or buying singles from Marvel until they bring back the Fantastic Four, you realize it when you read that series from Mark Wade. What were the other questions that we missed? Uh, before we go into that, uh, Gabe, oh. uh, have you read this comic book? It's called Fantastic Four Island of the Dead. Or Island no, of the I Dead. haven't. It's no. the Fantastic Four in Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's I cool. Kid- Did come visit you? Uh, I kid you not. Yeah, I think so. It's everywhere. It's a pretty cheap trade to get. It's really thin. Uh, it's a couple adventures, like five or six issues of them. Uh, solving issue uh, cases down here in Puerto Rico. So, do they go yeah. visit the 112 Walgreens you have over there? <laughs> Looking for pops <laughs> in search of the, uh, the Human Torch exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me see if I can pull up a uh, page here. Uh, but yeah, they fight um, Modok, and um, uh, turns out we have a superhero of our own called the Vejigante, which is pretty stupid, but whatever. Um, like I don't like them, but this is a damn panel. I lost the panel. Anyways, it looks pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see it. No, no, that's cool. Who, who's the artist on it? Uh, Juan Do, and it's written by Tom Bellin. No, Juan Do is cool. I like that guy. Yeah. So, uh... um, <laughs> oh, man, I feel bad. I got to go back and watch a uh, comic reliefs video, but I know John uh, recommended me a, a Fantastic Four book too. I haven't gotten around to finding it yet, but. Um, uh, you know, that's another thing. I would like to see more uh, YouTubers, you know, show up on, on the show every so often, too, or something. Like, our personal friends of YouTubers. You know, not big-name people. Mm-hmm. But awesome folks from the group. Yeah. Uh, your guys... I think, yeah, I've come up with the idea, but I've been bouncing around, is just, I think every subgroup we have should probably have a YouTube show on the Omni Bros channel. That's a fun idea. A movie, a movie show from the you know the the movieplex group, uh, a vinyl show from you know Bowie's turntable, uh, video games, uh, and then uh, Crypto's Den. You know that kind of stuff would be cool. Just to have that channel be more than just you know us and comics. It could be a, you know make it more inclusive and well-rounded. It's a lovely idea. I love it, it is. Jess can do the whole a vinyl thing. He's a yeah. master at it. <laughs> and the Omnibros channel uh, got a new uh, logo hooked up by our boy, Ben Williams. Mm-hmm. That out too. He showed me, um, he sent me a, a PM of the t-shirt design. For yourself, that one? For me, yeah. yeah Whoa. Cool, right? I had to make, I had to whip that up for you. It was awesome. Yeah, but you know, we'll probably should do some t-shirts and stuff one day. We keep talking about that, but I think we got a, a pretty sweet logo that would work for t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, I got uh, another question. Oh, I'm guys. sorry, I took over for a second. No, don't worry about it. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> uh, your guys' overall thoughts on the DCU initiative now? Uh, now that it's over? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I don't. I haven't read any DCU stuff. Uh, I really didn't either. Um, I, uh, I I still really love Burnside Batgirl. I think that's the best stuff that came out of DC in a in a long, long time. I started reading it, but I I didn't finish it. No, it I cool. love the original series. I haven't read the new stuff yet, the Rebirth stuff yet. Yeah, but that original. Uh, 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 Cameron Stewart's 
uh, stuff like that. Man, that stuff was great. I love when you can redesign a character like that and it, it works. I think that really works very well for, for that character and what they've done. Although, I don't know if you follow my train of thought. I think Burnside should have been Stephanie Brown instead of Barbara Gordon. I don't know what you think. I would go with that. I just like the design of the character. I like, uh, again, I like, I like, I like teenage characters sometimes as well, you know? So I like just her being, her just having like, you know, her group of friends that she's with that's in a band and kind of just their camaraderie and their, their troubles between one another and stuff like that too. Uh, Gabe, you got another question for you. Are you looking forward to the Thing Human Torch miniseries? Oh man, I am so pumped for that. That's going to be, uh, I put on my uh, Instagram that that's going to be the first Marvel series, like single issues that I I'm going to buy since the end of Secret Wars when they shell the Fantastic Four. So I'm super pumped for that. Uh, I read the article and uh, Chip Stardarsky sounds like he has a pretty cool idea. Um, going behind it, how Doctor Zoom has the secrets of where the rest of the Fantastic Four are. Like he's hiding them somewhere, or somehow keeping them out of our sight. Interesting. And I just love the idea of bringing them back to Marvel two and one team ups. That's such a cool idea. And it's Jim Chung. Like that guy is is a gorgeous, gorgeous artist. I love his artwork. Uh, so December cannot come quick enough for me. Favorite run you would like made into a movie or a show? Crossed. <laughs> Irredeemable. <coughs> Crossed would be on Cinemax or HBO or something like that. Uh, I don't know of... where it could be. And even then, people would be offended. Yeah. I don't think you could make a live action of that. Uh, I would like to see uh, Transmetropolitan. I think that's I keep mentioning it all the time, but that's super relevant for today. Yeah, it is. That'd be great. And honestly, I would love to see. I think that they're going to do it, so I don't think it's an original idea. But New Gods, I really think the New Gods is going to show up in uh, the DC Universe stuff. Uh, in the uh, cinematic universe, the movies. I don't think you could do Dark Side without having. Mr. Miracle yeah. and Orion and High Father and, and that kind of stuff going on. Right. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a matter of time. Right. And then I would also like to see maybe after they do that, uh, it's going to be, if they do it the right way and they follow the story, it'd be really messed up, but I think it'd be perfect. Identity crisis. Mm. That'd be interesting. <clears throat> uh, my pick would be Manifest Destiny. I think it'd be a great movie or TV show. I agree with that. You, you do it sort of like, if it's a movie, like uh, The Revenant from uh, Inyaritu uh, with uh, DiCaprio and all that stuff, sort of like that, but with all the fantastical elements from the comic book. I'd love to see that as a TV series. Yep. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, I also want to see, um, oh my God, uh, The Wicked Plus the Divine. I think that would be a great series too. Mm. Mm hmm. And I was going to say Invincible, but we're getting a movie soon. So, yeah. I'm going to do an Invincible movie. Well, I'm dying on the vine here, so we need to, I need to give you guys a two minute warning. Okay. This is your two minute warning. <laughs> uh, let's see if we have any more questions. Uh, least favorite series you collected in oversized hardcover? Um. Gosh, if I collected it in hardcover, that means that I really liked it. So, I uh, I don't know if it was a series and I collected it. I'm sure I liked it in hardcover. So that's hard to say. Yeah, I would say my least favorite would probably be. As I look at my collection and I skim it over uh, Walking Dead, because like after like the first like five hardcovers, the, the series to me kind of falls off a cliff. Oh, I guess I could say Astounding Wolfman. I collected <laughs> that in OHC and I 
dumped root beer on that. I hated it so much. Oh my God. I was going to tell you the other day, Jess, I read because I'm rereading Invincible and I came across the crossover. The crossover, huh? Reading... <laughs> oh my God. That was horrible. I'm like, <laughs> I read, I haven't read the series, but I did read that one issue that you have for uh, Wolfman. I'm like, damn, Jess had to go through hell to read that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just the crossover. <laughs> I just skimmed through it. I just read it speed run style and that eh, whatever. Yeah. It was pretty horrible. So yeah, that counts. That was an expensive book, too. Yeah. It was a you nice... get a lot of heat for that too, Jess. <laughs> for me, yeah. People weren't happy that I poured root beer on it. <laughs> Such is life. Say lovey. Yeah. No no empathy for me having to read it. Uh, my pick would be, and I love the series, don't get me wrong, uh, I think it'd be Fables simply because, <sighs> I don't know, I love the series, it's just, I don't, I don't like collecting, like, so many books from one series, like, oh, man, like, I gotta, it's like having a pull list, so many books uh, every few months, it's uh, kind of annoying, in my opinion. Mm, okay, that's legit. Yeah, I have most of Fables in trades, because I was collecting them before the hardcovers came out. Yeah, tr uh, trades is like twenty-two books, and hardcovers is like fifteen oversized hardcovers. I'm like, come on, you could condense that. Yeah, it is a lot of books to collect. You're right, but I love that series, so I don't mind it. It's the I'm first. Still, uh, yeah. I think it was either volume one or volume two of the hardcovers. I think it was out of print for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Know that. I gotta read fables i think i left it at like book three or four. Oh my gosh i love that book so much if you read book two if you read the animal farm then you read some of the best stuff ever yeah i agree with that yeah um i regret getting the swamp thing uh hardcovers uh mainly because i can't find all of them <laughs> so i'm kind of just stuck with volume one volume two right now mm. Yeah, what's the hard one to get? Four or five? Uh, I think all of them are. <laughs> mm. But I'm almost positive there's going to be some kind of premiere format of that coming out pretty soon. If it's not, especially not at uh, Rest in Peace, uh, Lynn Wein, but I, I think they could we'll probably get some more Swamp Thing stuff coming out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or the Authority hardcovers. That's kind of a waste because I know now the uh, on the or the Absolute's coming out again. Let's see what else. <laughs> Somebody says, uh, Jess, that you need more alimony halls. <laughs> I saw that. Um, <laughs> that's funny. You got some statues coming in, right? Yeah, I do have some statues coming in. I already got one. Black Canary <laughs> came in. That looks pretty badass. Yeah, Black Canary. And then, um, let's see, Wonder Woman's coming in. <laughs> um, uh, Jane Foster's coming in. And then the one I'm really excited for, Zatanna. That's the one I'm really excited about. But that's not till next year. That is future Jess's problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still uh, making payments on the, uh, the, the Thanos statue. Oh, really nice. yeah. That, did that thing sell out? <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really double-checked. I just got mine and just never looked back again. Yeah, I bet that sold out. That looked really cool. Take a look. You better do a thousand videos on it because it's so freaking expensive. Yeah. A video for every dollar I spent on it. Yeah, you got to milk <laughs> it. Screw the haters. Just milk that puppy. Uh, I am getting, speaking of statues, I am really excited about the Frank Show Wonder Woman statue. That I did get uh, pre ordered. Yeah, that's right. No, uh, Thanos is still up, um, but since it's getting so close to the release date, 
the uh, the payment plan starts at almost three hundred dollars a month now for it. Oh, is wow. the exclusive is still available? No, that exclusive sold out in like twenty minutes. Okay, that's what I thought. Is that what you got? No, because I was a. Uh, uh, I was being very indecisive about whether I wanted it or not to spend that kind of money on it. Mm. And I had it in my cart, and then when I decided to go ahead and go for it, it was already sold out. Ah, bummer. Oh. What was the yeah. difference between the uh, exclusive and the regular one? The exclusive had a different head, mm. where it's kind of like the Ron Lim head, where he had a smile, okay. and his eyes are kind of like a cosmic kind of design to him. Okay. But you know, nothing big deal. I don't. I'm. I'm, I'm fine with it. I still got. Yeah. So the one you got looks great. So. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <clears throat> and uh, Jess, I, I posted on the den that Mark Brooks did a deal with Sideshow. They're going to do statues based off uh, his artwork. Oh really? Yeah, they're going to do Spider Verse stuff. They're doing Spider Gwen and Silk. Ooh. Looks pretty good. I like it. I'll have to check that out. That <coughs> sounds really good. His stuff's great. Mm-hmm. Um, here's one. Uh, Sean Murphy is coming to my local con. What are your guys' favorite Sean Murphy stuff you did? Punk Rock Jesus is awesome. Uh, Joe the G Barbarian. Joe, the, Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. Joe the Barbarian. Joe the Barbarian. I like The Wake. I like um, uh, what was the, the Tokyo Ghost? It's also pretty good. Yeah, that was good. That was great. I love Tokyo Ghost. All dongs aside, looks pretty good. I think I don't think he's ever done anything really like bad. He's Sean Murphy's great with everything he's done, but I love. Yeah. I was really taken back by uh, uh, Joe the Barbarian. Yeah, that was really a great book. He's going to do the Batman thing, right? Uh, the, yeah, and I've seen some art for that. It looks, and the concept is amazing. White Knight? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Okay, I'm getting ready to call it. Okay. Cool. Gabe, where can they find you in this world? In this world, you can find me in Las <laughs> Vegas. Oh. Uh, <laughs> keeping, uh, keeping seats warm for me and Jess at strip clubs later. That's right. It's going <laughs> to happen. That's going to go down. Uh, but here on YouTube, on YouTube, you can find me at Gabe Infinity Watch. Uh, I'll be doing uh, – I'm, I'm thinking my next video is going to be a – uh, spotlight look at the awesome Harley Quinn on the bus that me and Jess were talking about. So I'm going to do a video on that one next. Nice. Yay. How about, do you do Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I am on uh, Instagram. Uh, that's where I'm posting all those uh, Pennywise memes of how you can get on the bus collectors in the sewers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm having fun with those. But yeah, I mean, that's usually where I post all my hauls and, and fun stuff like that is uh, on Instagram. So you go see photos of what I'm picking up as I get it. Okay. And Gio, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Uh, I do weekly content on movies, books, toys, and all the fun stuff that we all love. And you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. If you want to see some boring Snapchats while I am uh, working, uh, then uh, go right ahead and follow me there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm really close to 1,000 subscribers, and I really want to promote it because I want to do a cool giveaway on that. So nice. if you can head on over to the channel and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. That's awesome. Uh, you can find me, Omnidog, at Omnidog's Vault on YouTube or Riley Moore's Facebook page, The Omni... Wait, The Omnibus... The, uh, the Omnibus Collector's Comic Swap and Community. I couldn't even spit it out. I'm, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> you can find all of us on that community on Facebook, in fact. Yeah. Right. That's where we all met. Yep. 
Okay, guys, thanks for this. This was great. Thanks to the audience for uh, hanging in there with us, and thanks to my hosts for uh, helping out, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs>